This is the tarot card reading for the United States for the month of June. And um, it was, uh, I ended up drawing two cards. One, the first question was just straight on, you know, what, what is it the people of the U.S. need to know and do? And the second question was, where's Trump? How does Trump play in all this? What's happening with Trump? So, so the first card um, that came up was the two of pentacles. And you'll see in this card, um, there's a guy standing on the shore, big waves happening in the background. And there's a couple of ships on uh, riding those waves. It is not a nice, quiet sea. Um, and he is balancing these two pentacles, and there's a green uh, infinity symbol uh, that he's kind of, you know, running these two pentacles back and forth along this. It's a, actually a green cord or a green band, and he's wearing this very tall red hat, and he's got a tunic on, red tights, green shoes, and a tunic that is all raggedy along the edges. Okay, so all of those have meanings. Um, so let's, the basic meaning of the Two of Pentacles, and by the way, last month somebody asked me what book I used. I used several books, but I would recommend this one. Um, the Rider White, The Ultimate Guide to the Rider White Tarot. That is, it's excellent. It's just excellent. I use this in my own interpretations and a couple of other books that I have. So, but uh, this one is uh, the Two of Pentacles. If this is the question is, what is it the people of the United States need to know and do? So here's the answer or the response to that question. They need to come to terms with contradictions. They need to integrate personal strengths and weaknesses. We need to recognize and deal with our own problems as well as other people's problems. You'll hear a lot of times people saying, I'm, uh, I'm an evolved being and I'm, the, I'm creating my reality and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And yeah, that might be true, but so is everybody else. They're creating their own version of reality and you get to deal with that. And if you're married to somebody or you have family or you have neighbors or you have people you work with, by gosh, you're going to be dealing with other people and their problems, okay, and the way they see the world. So you're not the only one creating. So how do you integrate all that creation? And this card is about need to do that. Um, the card is also the principles of pleasure and duty at odds with each other. In other words, if we're a bunch of immature brats and we have all these duties, if we want to have a country, something's going to give. It's probably going to be the country. And we can't do that. So we have to mature. We have to understand that if you want this kind of country, if you want this kind of freedom, if you want the kind of carefree life and the potential to be able to develop yourself whatever way you want, then you have to be dealing with um, that whole issue of what do I have to do to make sure that that happens? I can't just sit back and say, oh, isn't life great? Freedom isn't free. You've probably heard that many times. Freedom is not free. Okay. So, and we are also, this is the card of finally having to face the sunny side and the seamy side, the ugly side, the beauty and the bestiality, the, the glory, the joy, the pleasures, and the sorrows, the terrors, um, the awful stuff happening having to come to terms with that. So, it, and it basically says, the message of, the, of this card says, you have your stamp, set your stamp on the world. In other words, figure out how to uh, live your life in a way that brings joy, that integrates well, 
that results in smooth cooperation with you and everybody around you. That's your stamp. Make that stamp on the world. So um, the in the card on the deeper side, is it like whoa, <laughs> says uh, a sea change, and and that's that rough sea, big waves in the background of this picture. A sea change means going in an entirely new direction. A whole shift in life's focus. What are we doing? Why are we doing this? What is this about? What's really happening here? That's what this card is saying. Time to deal with that. New facts, new values, and new results come to the foreground in your present situation and present you with a new perspective. So those new facts could be, wow, <laughs> could be anything. They could be something about the election. And the election is not what we thought it was. Or it could be something about the virus. Or something about the masks. Or something about the jab. Or something about the financial system. Or something about Biden's government. Whatever. New facts, new values, and new results come to the foreground and present you with a new perspective. And really and truly, the easiest way to make a change is to get a new perspective. Then a change is like, well, yeah, that makes sense. I need to do this. We need to do this, etc. So... It, this here's uh, some more for this card. Something, some possibility that was waiting in the wings comes forward and takes on a whole new meaning. So something has been kind of off to the side. We're all focused over here and this over here is really where the action is at. And that comes out of the shadows out of the, you know, off, it's no longer off to the side, it's front and center, and it has to be dealt with. And it's gonna, it's gonna change everything. When meaning changes, everything changes. In fact, the spiritual development in an individual, everything, all the meanings that they assign to things change. Things that were so important, no longer important. Things that they never thought about are now front and center. Meaning is everything. And you assign the meaning. So the warning with this card is don't try to play dice with fate. And don't dig your heels in either. In other words, um, don't be cavalier enough to think that you could just throw a few dice and say, yeah, the dice told me to do this, you know. That that's not what is required here. There needs to be some real depth. There needs to be some real attention and some deep thinking, deep awareness. What all is happening? What's on the surface and what's under the surface? So no cavalier. Um, don't dig your heels in, meaning don't resist the change. So, and, and don't be flippant with that change. The solution is to come to grips with all the contradictions. And boy, do we have the contradictions. <laughs> They're everywhere. You already have what you need in your hands to juggle all the elements into a favorable position. Now, that statement right there is so critical. It says we don't have to have big uproar. We just kind of keep wiggling and jiggling and juggling and everything falls into place. That's, there's no need for an explosion. I like that. Okay. Um, regarding spiritual experience, it's, it says you are bringing new facts into the world and it will help you to reform the face of the earth. It's like, whoa, okay. So the face of the earth right now, I would, you know, I think back to when I was a little girl, um, life had a certain rhythm. We lived by a certain calendar. It was the calendar of the, 
of the fields of Mother Nature and of the church and of the school. That was how we organized life. When you reform the face of the earth, that means everything looks different. What if there's other beings out there and they land in your front yard? <laughs> so doesn't that just change the face of the earth? It looks different. So as a prognosis or the for this month of June, um, two of pentacles says you may reckon with temporary upsets. And that's probably going to be pretty uh, much a given because we're in Mercury retrograde for three fourths of this month. It doesn't end until the 23rd. So only the last week we're moving away from Mercury retrograde. Uh, let me start that again. You may reckon with temporary upsets and a degree of insecurity because your life is undergoing change. But how else can you get around to casting off old habits and listen to this and developing a new state of consciousness? And if you take that a new state, I think we're developing a new state. The state of the world, a, the state of the United States, and a new consciousness around that. So let me read that again. You may reckon with temporary upsets, yep, and a degree of insecurity as your life undergoes change. But how else can you get around to casting off old habits and developing a new state? Of consciousness. Okay. So, in, and it says in terms of looking for success, um, the ships in the background, uh, they are fully loaded. They're under full sail and they're fully loaded. Um, when you have your sails up full, you better have some ballast. And, and I don't know if any of you have ever learned to sail, but, um, you don't put full sail up unless you've got some weight that will help you navigate. Otherwise, you're going to blow away. So where is our ballast? What's balancing us? You know, that has to be our values, our ethics, our vision of the world we want to live in. It has to be the physical material stuff that we have access to. Can we feed ourselves? Can we heat our houses? Can we build houses? Can we heal ourselves, um, et cetera, et cetera. That's ballast. Okay, so a couple other things in the um, symbolism of the hat. Um, the large red hat, like a rooster's comb, suggests ego. Too much zeal, haughtiness, especially in so far as the figure is unaware of what's going on behind him. Um, so the the warning is: be careful that you don't get too haughty. Don't think you you're there if you're not there yet. Don't get flippant. Okay. The tunic his tunic is all raggedy around the bottom. Um, and it has no hem. And that's the symbolism. We are really not hemmed in anywhere for any reason. Yes, things look a little raggedy. <laughs> and things are unfolding in sort of a, a you know, ragtag sort of way. Information's pouring out. And it's all over the place. It's not smooth. It's not... Uh, hemmed in. The truth is never hemmed in. And so um, it says, when you turn to face the contradictions in your life, they can appear as an interesting aspect of life. If we're not hemmed in, then it, in other words, if we don't have any security that we can go back to what we were doing, back to the way that we were living, the security or the, the good thing about that, the contradictory aspect of that, is, wow, sky's the limit. This is our chance. 
to make big changes. Lots of potential there. A um, couple of other things, the two pentacles stand for the proverbial two sides of the coin. In different ways, all of our personal strengths, our shortcomings, the bright side and the bad side, our gifts and our disabilities are needed. They form the whole picture. We need that. We need both sides of the coin. However, we have to sort out what's useful and what's what do we want to minimize and what do we want to maximize so that strengths and weaknesses are not mistaken for one another. You want to focus on your strengths and ignore your weaknesses. And, um, and then the, there's a, if you look at this card, there's a, an infinity symbol there, a horizontal uh, kind of an infinity symbol, that green cord. Um, that basically symbolizes endless possibilities. We've got infinity and potential or potentials to infinity, possibilities to infinity. What can we do with that? Wow. With everything about that. So, um, and then the last thing I would say is that the sailing ships in the background, um, it's a symbol of the ability to handle the changing winds of fortune skillfully so as to be able to reach a safe harbor in any condition so a couple other things the green shoes that he has on um green is the color of life it's the color of vitality um but you know on the other hand it can stand for not enough experience if we're coming into making a new world we don't really have a lot of experience in building, shaping, designing, you know, creating a new world. And so the green shoes indicate that we're kind of green at that. But if we have a lot of what grandma called piss and vinegar, um, we can do it. It'd be okay. Um, we just don't want to start something and then go off half cocked or half baked. Um, that would be a terrible mistake. The, the fact that there's no clouds in the sky at all, none, means we have, it's clear. There is nothing to cloud our future. Let's get busy creating. And I think the, um, the green band, uh, hang on just a second here. Oh, that is both the shoes and the band. Yeah. Um, and I just want to... Um, mention the waves as well again um, the waves because they're exaggerated they're big waves in the background here um, they symbolize life's high points and low points we have had some serious high points and some real low points over the last couple of years um, but it, they point to passage to new continents and and new continents symbolize new places to stand you, you float on the water, you stand on the land, you stand on a continent. Um, and those, you know, maybe we're going to discover new continents or new continents are going to be formed. But the basic symbolism here is that we, uh, we have a new place to stand. A new stance is a whole new perspective. I want to say something about his, his tights. Um, red, he's wearing these red tights. And that the red always stands for passion. It stands for willpower and, um, and also eagerness. But sometimes you have to be careful about over eager. Don't be too, don't overdo. Um, the color of the tunic represents a mixture of red and yellow. Um, and, the, and that combination of the will, willpower and the color, the yellow of the sun, the sun almost always means there's success there. Um, success is possible. It's within our grasp. So, um, you know, just go for that. Let's not get caught up in envy or greed or worrying about what the Russians are doing or what the Chinese are doing. Or I think it's really important at this point to um, to really, you know, trust that we're going to be successful. We have some passion. I mean, maybe some of that passion is against us, 
But um, if we can hold a place of grace and a place of openness and allow people to begin to see, um, this card is about um, seeing. It's, it's about seeing both sides of the coin. Um, and, and if we can allow people's lives to make the adjustment to new situation, the sea change is critical. C, S E A, sea change it means the ocean or the sea starts moving in a different direction. Um, the sun and the red, um, the yellow of his tunic is the, it symbolizes both willpower and passion from the red, and the sun symbolizes success and bringing light onto the situation which we desperately need. Um, shining light into a lot of places. And um, and the whole thing, if he's really dancing or he's, he looks like he's about to take a step, um, if he's not dancing and he's just taking a step, it symbolizes the fact that we are about to take a step in a whole new direction. And it's a step that probably we won't reverse. We won't be able or want to reverse. And that's why we need to see both sides of the coin. We need to um, to be assessing, okay, you know, let's, let's not be too uh, flippant here or too cavalier about the decisions we're making. Let's be serious and let's be mature. So that's our card for June. Um, it's a wonderful card in terms of saying, okay, put your stamp on the world. Um, we, we of the U.S. are going to have a different impact on the world than we were having. And <laughs> back in the day, we were having an impact that was, uh, it was two-sided. Um, people saw the U.S. as a place of freedom, a place of possibility, a place where you could become. Uh, other people saw the U.S. as a place of terrible corruption, manipulation, um, you know, forcing their will on other countries, um, you know, a lot of bad stuff. So that I think that really has to be taken into account. We need to see how we were impacting others and then decide how do we want to be seen in the future? What do we stand for in the future? And by gosh, if we, I should say when we are done with this whole transition, this whole shift of consciousness, this whole shift of awareness to a more awakened state, it is definitely gonna affect how we run this country and what we ask people to do when we elect them or um, how we, how we, whether or not we even keep elections, et cetera, et cetera. So, or the changes that we might make around those elections. What do we want? Have you heard me say that before? What do we want? Um, you know, we want truth, we want uh, freedom, we want to be an inspiration to others in a way that empowers them where they're at. That's so important. It's like re-educating the whole world about what we stand for. Let's do it. So that was the question, what do the people of the US need to know and do? And then I said, well, there wasn't anything really about Trump in there. Um, what, what's happening with Trump? So then I drew the, the King of Swords so the King of Swords says, this card emphasizes royal dignity and masculine attributes. You have and you are developing a majestic mastery over the aerial forces of life. Your whole potential as a human being with a sense of independence, clarity of thought, and farsightedness is needed. So... I ended up thinking, okay, I didn't ask a very good question. You know, let me just let me just kind of read through this and and I'm gonna take this card as this is Trump. This is Trump's role in our world. And um, 
And so we're going to draw from Trump. We're not going to expect him to do something. We're going to draw wisdom from what he symbolizes. Okay. He doesn't have to return. Maybe he will, um, et cetera, et cetera. But we're going to draw some symbols from Trump as this card represents. And it represents um, what do I know of life and of my leader? What do we really know about this leader at this moment in time? What does he symbolize? He symbolizes our choice to do something different. He symbolized the fact that we elected him, symbolized our choice to wake up, to enter into a different kind of consciousness. So it says, as with uh, all the court cards, the king represents an ideal. So Trump represents an ideal. He represents something different, something new, something he was busy building the country up and getting more jobs, bringing people back to the U.S., changing the laws, getting rid of a lot of the, uh, um, I'm going to call it the silly, stupid regulations that were burdensome to all of the small businesses out there, all of them. So, um the, he represents this ideal and he represents, this card represents mastery over thoughts, words, and opinions. So we need mastery over our thoughts, our words, and our opinions. We the people need that. We can't get that from Trump. He's only the symbol of that. He's, it's like saying, hey. You know, this is what you guys are about. This is what you guys need. So, um, and basically the, the card, the, the spiritual side of the card is the ability to grasp complex interactions, interconnections, integrations, complex. We need to see that life is not as simple and naive as we thought it was. A lot of crap happening in the background. A lot of ugly stuff. Um, lots and lots of change. Lots of potential out there being shut off, you know, at the spigot. Never reaching us. So can we understand that all that is there? It's waiting for us. Can we grasp the complexities of an entirely new energy system? Can we see a new world organization that is not new world order kind of stuff? Yeah, we can. We're smart enough. So um, this card also demands that each one of us make our contribution toward living together harmoniously. Every single person is needed. And there's no getting around that. As a prognosis, the card describes strong mental forces and energies in the realms of the mind, in the realms of knowledge, and in the realms of conscience. Conscience is a little different from consciousness. Consciousness is the ability to know, to perceive. Conscience is something that contains what you think is good, right, beautiful, and true. Okay? So let me read that again. This card describes or st stands for strong mental forces and energies in the realms of the mind, knowledge, and conscience, which either emanate from you and I or which others try to bring to bear on you. Okay, this is a king. He's got a sword. He's got power. Whose power is it? Is it the power of the cabal being forced on us? Is it the power of the UN, the New World Order? Is it, is it our power? Do we need to cut that power loose and start using it? Yeah, absolutely. What we need, really need, is not going to be achieved by calculated manipulation 
It's not, we're not going to get there by hiding behind intelligent lack of commitment. You know, that, that just, we can't say, well, let's see. And the intelligent lack of commitment is waiting to see which side the chips fall on. That doesn't work. Make a commitment and start driving in that direction. Stick to what genuinely affects you. In other words, don't try to change the world. Just change yourself. Be the king of your own life. Decide. Decide what you're, what's going on in your own life. Sex, sex, success or failure depends on our ability to question our own motives and see ourselves as others do. Can we question our motives? Can we see ourselves the way others do? I think we're going to hurt. I think we're going to cry when we see or understand how many other countries have hoped that we would go down because we have not been fair to them. We have some making up to do. We have some bridge building that needs to be done. So a couple of things in terms of symbolism. Um, the king in this picture is wearing a light blue robe. And it's, it's really that robe is light blue is almost always the symbol of spiritual yearning, wanting something. What are we wanting? Peace? Joy, security, contentment, success. What do we want? So um, the he's got a sword. And the way he's holding the sword, it's kind of like, yeah, here's my sword. It's not like, I'm, you know, I'm ready to, to use this sword and to chop somebody's head off. Um, it, the, it's just a symbol of knowledge, wisdom, um, gives us facility in managing our longings and our needs. The sword is, is a power symbol. We can manage. We can control our moods. We can um, expand our knowledge. We can expand consciousness. We just have to do it. And there are, you can barely see them. In the background, there's on the back of his throne, there are these graphic forms of butterflies. And the butterflies um, symbolize a lightness of heart as well as transformation, but they warn against don't be too flighty, be grounded, etc. Um, butterflies are also a metaphor for the soul. Um, it's a symbol of successful metamorphosis, and we need that going from the caterpillar to the butterfly. We are undergoing a metamorphosis in this world, on this planet, not just the U.S., the whole planet, okay? So we're going from run-of-the-mill to something absolutely wonderful. Keep that in mind. Um, on the chair also, there's you can't really see it unless you get really close. There's a couple there's either a couple of people or a couple of elves, and they symbolize happiness. Um, they're in the background. They're in the deep part of our mind. Um, let's bring that forward, that pleasure, that joy, those relationships. Let's bring those forward and live those through. So um, there's uh, on either side of his throne, um, up at the top, kind of around the butterfly, there's a double sickle moon and that symbolizes the night it symbolizes feelings um and and the fact that things are ever changing things come out of the dark We're, <laughs> we don't see them until they move into the light but there's a lot of dreams they form the backdrop they they constitute our motives and our reasons for doing things as well as our visions so um, all of that, very, very important. Let yourself dream. Let yourself know that there's that dream is right there. It just needs to move into the light. Um, <clears throat> the uh, king himself is, um, he's got his head um, above the clouds. If you look closely at the, 
at the card, you can see his head is above the clouds. And basically, that has two meanings. It can be positive, meaning there's knowledge there. Um, he has space. We have space to be and to become. We have space to make change, lots of changes. Um, we can become citizens of more than one world, which we're headed right for. So, and the warning is, you know, the, on, the, on the negative side is now don't, don't get too detached. Um, keep your, keep in touch with your reality. Okay. Keep your, you can keep your head in the clouds, but keep your feet in, on the ground. Uh, the gray mantle that the king is wearing <clears throat> is um, uh, that there's a couple of things. Grayness um, can sometimes put a blanket or dull, dull down the joy of life, etc. cetera. Um, but it can also be a sign of shrewd businessman. And that's what we were asking in the beginning was this is the, what's Trump? What is he the symbol of? He's a shrewd businessman. And do we need to be more shrewd in our business dealings? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Um, th th certainly, we are not seeing that kind of shrewdness with uh, our current president. Excuse me for saying current president. I don't think he's really. Uh, well, let's just go over that. <laughs> um, okay. I think uh, in, the, in the background, um, there's the great, the whole throne is pointing skyward. Um, the weapons of the intellect, this symbolizes, the throne symbolizes the intellect. That's where we rest. We, we spring forward and move into the world from that base. Our throne is our intellect. Um, and the weapons of the intellect enable us to live a life of awareness. What has Trump done and what has his whole message been? Wake up, people. Wake up. So uh, this is that's what the throne symbolizes. It's a symbol of intellect that is aware. Um, and it builds a bridge between heaven and earth, desire and reality, theory and practice. You know, we can't just be one or the other. We have to be all of those things. So... And then um, the last thing I would say is in the background, there's a couple of birds um, flying through that blue sky. There's a few clouds in the sky. Um, and so it's, there's a lot of questions around Trump. There's a lot of questions. People are posing questions. Whose side is he on? Where did he go? Why didn't he come back? Blah, blah, blah. He doesn't have to come back. He can stand as a symbol of our need to be aware, to take charge, to be more shrewd, and, you know, to reach for an ideal. What is our ideal? And certainly it's not manipulation and corruption. So the, the, anyway, the two birds um, indicate great plans, wonderful plans, um, high flying, don't settle. You know, let yourself fly, coming to terms with oneself and others. We have a place in this world. We have a place on this planet and in this cosmos. If we cannot take charge of what's happening on the planet, how are we going to step out into relationships with others in the entire galaxy? We wouldn't be able to. We have to grow up. And this card, swords always bring tears. So this card really, Trump symbolizes us taking charge of ourselves, using our intellect, being everything that we need to be, transforming ourselves, that's the butterfly, bringing our own visions to bear. That's what the card is about. So things to think about for the month of June and our position in the world. Thank you. <laughs>